history and the future. What, what, when we use terminology to a linguist, what does this mean? Well, it means basically that we have history that has been, and yet we have tomorrow that's future. As a matter of fact, future will always happen or you got trouble. In other words, when I finish the sentence I'm now speaking, it is future to the point I started, I began. Yet, in man's life, what does God have to say about this? This is what's important. This is what is very important, that you keep attuned to your father's wishes. One of the greatest preachers there ever was, aside from Christ himself, was uh, Solomon. Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 1. The words of the preacher, the son of David, king of Jerusalem. Vanities of vanities, saith the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. It denotes emptiness if you're not careful. I don't know, how's your life doing? What profit hath a man of all his labor which he taketh under the sun? Under the sun is a, is a Hebraism that means in the flesh body. What can you do in your flesh body? Well, I know I've read where the very best we can be in our flesh bodies. I don't care if you're a preacher or a lay person, uh, a barfly, or whatever. All of our righteous acts are as filthy rags compared to God. So we're, we're always going to fall short in the flesh one way or the other. Sooner or later, we kind of trip up, some of us more so than others. Now, concerning history and future, skip down to the ninth verse. The thing that hath been, that's history, it is that which shall be, that's future. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. So, what does it mean? Well. History is going to repeat itself, so that's future. That's why it's important. You know what happens if you stand still? You're spiritually dead. God insisted that you use wisdom, knowledge, and understanding so you could be a better servant. How are you going to know what God would have you know, whereas where it is written in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 26, God says to you, you, you remind me of my promises and we'll sit down and, and we'll talk about it. That means, do you think God forgets? No. He doesn't forget history, nor is he going to forget the future which he already has planned. It's going to go down exactly the way he says it will. Or let me rephrase that. It's going to go down just like it did the last time. In the first earth age, that was ancient. That was long ago. This earth was beautiful. But do you know it's going back to that again? That's what we look forward to. That's future. But yet, there's nothing new under the sun. It has been. There's only one way you can stay away from the future or futurism. That's on judgment day to be sentenced to hell and die and then you have no future. Until then, even in the eternity, there will be the next day, future. Future is a beautiful thing. I would feel very concerned for someone that was a pacifist, spiritually speaking and was happy with the way things are in this world age when Satan's in control. That is to say, God allows him to be the prince of the air. So he's nipping at you all the time. That is to say, messing your day up if you let him. I will never let him, after, you know, he may slip up on me at times, but there's going to be one big struggle when I find out what he's doing. And uh, so we nip it in the bud. We put a stop to it. Period. So future is good. Beware of any person that ever tells you you shouldn't be acquainted with the future. You're listening to a false prophet. Period. That's it. 
Why? God says there's nothing new under the sun. So let your mind expand and stay in wisdom. What does God have, what does God instruct us further concerning this? Again, I want to repeat, there's only one way you can cut future out of your life. And I'm going to tell you something, the choice is not too good. It's to be sentenced to hell, die, and you have no future. You can stop worrying about the future permanently. Isaiah chapter 44 for me. What does God say about his word, which is the future? You know, I, I want to say one word before we get into this chapter, 44th chapter. Why does God do it this way? Because sometimes it's a little hard for us to learn something. A little hard for us to catch on. So he says, look, children, I'm going to do this over and over and over. And pretty soon, hey, you can look and you'll know exactly how I operate. You know, there's nothing new under the sun, so you don't have to worry about getting tripped up. All you have to do is look how it happened the last time when you rightly divide the word and apply it to that nation, that to particular peoples. As, as far as the time and the season, and you're going to have it. It's an oversimplification, in a sense, of the way he teaches. It makes it so easy. But he is the Word. In the beginning was the Word. God was the Word. The Word was with him. It was God. All right? His Word is everything to you. Naturally, we love him and we love the Son, but our order of the day is his word, and it's important. Well, maybe if it's that important, I don't have to know about it. Well, sorry for you. You're going to get caught short, I guarantee you. You're going to be misled. If you're not familiar with that that's going to happen when he makes it so easy for you. Chapter 44, verse 6. Well, let, let, let me bring you up to speed what's happening here. A lot of people are playing around, okay? They're trying to play church instead of paying attention to the Word of God. You see, there's only one God. I don't care what church you go to. You, there's only one Father. Verse 6, Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, that's our Father, and His Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, that's the Son, Kinsman Redeemer, I am the first, I am the last, and beside me there is no God. I'm it. I was in the beginning. I'm going to be here at the end. Where are you going to be? Okay. There's nothing new under the sun. Seven. And who, uh, who else, you might say, as I shall call and shall declare it. I can tell you the future. That's what he's saying. That is future. He said, I can do it. Nobody else can. And set it in order for me, since I appointed the ancient people, I appointed in the first earth age exactly how it was going down when I made the correction. And the things that are coming, that that is future, and shall come, uh, and things that are coming, and shall come, not maybe, not perhaps, it's going to come, let them show unto them. In other words, you let some prognosticator do that for you. Well, what's he talking about? Well, he means you've got the word of God and he's foretold you all things in it. Have you read it? Have you, look, have you dared look in the future a little bit? He makes it very easy for you. A child can do it. And naturally, that's what he expects out of you. Don't die. There's no need in it. Look to the future. Know what it is he wants from you. Well, I just want to be a pretty thing. I just want to be perfect. I'm sorry, you're in the flesh. Now, I know that may insult some people, but I'm a, I'm a realist. And, you know, and um, I know we mess up. People mess up. But thank God for the kinsman redeemer. He forgives. And we continue on ahead. Verse 8. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. 
Have not I told you from that time? I warned you from the beginning and have declared it. It's written. Have you read it? Ye are even my witnesses. That is to say those that have read it. If there be, if is there a God besides me? Of course the answer is no. Yea, there is no God. I know not any. Unless you want to uh, deceive yourself, that, that word God there is rock in the Hebrew. And it goes back to the song of, um, of Moses in Deuteronomy 32 where our rock is not their rock. And let me tell you something. You start playing around or allow someone to play around with God's word and leave part of it out then you're easily deceived you are so easily deceived that it's not it's pathetic it's like a it's like a an old hog returning to the mire after you kind of clean it up a little bit God foretells us for our own benefit now what, what will man do to you? Turn, to, we, we know what God will, God can foretell. Why? It's written. He's got, you have the witness in your hand that he can tell you. And he gives examples throughout history. Go to chapter 47 for me, okay? Chapter 47. Let's see what man can do when, um, let's pick it up with, Isaiah 47 verse 10 okay let's let's try to pick it up along there verse 10 for thou hast trusted in wickedness that's when you trust in things of the world men like this man or any other man you always take the word of God over man's word all right and, but you log it down and listen to it God can tell you what tomorrow brings have you heard it if not, you're in trouble. You can't blame him. He warns you. That's what we call future. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. Thou hast said, none seeth me the wisdom, thy wisdom and thy knowledge. Not God's, man's little old puny thing. It hath perverted thee and thou hast said in thine heart, I am and none else beside me. I got a nice little religion going here. That's what the old queen said in the great harlot of the book of Revelation. I don't need anything else. I said a queen. Well, until the future return of our Lord Jesus Christ, you're not okay, all right? That is to say, within, within yourself, you're okay in him. Verse 11, therefore shall evil come upon thee. You can count on it. Thou shalt not know from whence it riseth. You're not going to know which way it hits you. And mischief shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it off. You can't charm it away with your religion. And desolation shall come upon thee suddenly. Which thou shalt not know. You're not even going to know. What, why wouldn't you know? You haven't studied God's word in the future since. If he's, he declared, I've foretold you all things. Why haven't you read it? Why haven't you studied it? You wouldn't have been caught off guard. That's the point. Twelve. Stand now with thine enchantments, your little religion, and with the multitude of thy sorceries, wherein thou hast labored from thy youth. If so be, thou shalt be able to profit, be blessed. If so, be thou if so be thou mayest uh, prevail if so be thou mayest prevail in other words um, um, you can't um, a religion cannot save you Christianity is not a religion it's a reality okay you can listen to charmers and hearsayers all you want to but you'd better stick to the word as it's written for he has foretold you all things you're not going to be caught off guard. You're not going to be ashamed if you do it his way. 13, thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. Oh, you listen to everybody. Oh, this brother says this and that brother says that. Well, beloved, what's important? What does God's word say? That's what's important. Men will lead you down Primrose Lane. 
if you allow it. Now, it doesn't hurt to listen to man, but always check him or her out in the Word of God. So you know which side is up. It's like we pilots, when we're flying, one of the last things you say is keep the dirty side down. Well, if you don't know which way is up, you're going to be upside down and maybe going for a bad cruise, all right? Know where you're at. Be able to determine for yourself because there is no excuse for anyone not to understand the simplicity of what has been is going to be again. All right? It's like playing any children's game. Once you play the thing about a hundred times, you should have it down pretty good. Thou art worried in the multitude of thy counsels. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. Let them pull you out of Antichrist's arms once you flop in his sack. Okay? You were warned. Go ahead, allow yourself to be deceived. Verse 14, Behold, they shall be as stubble. This is how God feels about it. The fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. There shall not be a coal to warm at, nor fire to sit before it. Do, do you know what this is saying? Let the fire of your religion, when it's just nothing but old stubble. Now you would have to experience this. What, what is left over? If you burn a piece of hard oak in your fireplace, what's left over when the flame dies down? You've got some red hot coals. When stubble finishes burning, you can walk in it. There's nothing. Nada. Absolutely zero. Nothing to warm you by. That's what false religion will do. Fifteen. Thus shall they be unto thee with whom thou hast labored, even thy merchants. That's to say, your merchants of religion. By this little idea, by that one. From thy youth, they shall wander every one to his quarter. None shall save thee. Why? There's only one Savior. And that's your Father. Now, he, has, he loves you enough that he has written you the letter. He has given you the advice. The question is, have you listened to it? Have you listened to it diligently? Again, don't listen to this man or any other man. Do you know why? In this great nation, praise God, every man has the freedom to teach whatever he wants to, and I have fought for that right. But a person that will listen to a fool is a bigger fool than the fool is. Well, how do I know the difference? By checking them out in God's Word. It's very simple. Then you know which side of your bread is buttered on. And preferably, it's best to hold it butter side up. All right. So you should the word of God and the events that you experience in life. Uh, okay. Well, there we had a little chase around there, and the let's let's go from this forty-seven. Let's go all the way up to the fifty-sixth chapter of Isaiah. Isaiah means salvation. That's what we kind of want to all make. You know, it's Yahweh's salvation, telling you how to save your soul. And everyone should be a little bit interested in that because I think most everyone wants their saved soul saved, all right? Isaiah chapter 56, let's pick it up with verse 10. This is talking about false religions that never look to the future. Listen to it carefully. Verse 10. His watchmen are blind. Now, number one, what is a watchman? A watchman is a seer, one that watches for the enemy's coming. If your watchman is stupid and doesn't know the enemy is coming, or tells you not to worry about the enemy, you're in deep um, trouble. Deep, deep trouble. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark. Sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. They're lazy. What do you keep a watchdog for? To watch. 
what is your what what is your uh, watchman spiritually speaking supposed to be doing for you if you are sleeping and you have him on guard he's supposed to be watching for the enemy which what is God telling you look to the future you're supposed to be a watchman so watch watchman watch you get into a religion that is just like a bunch of old lazy hounds that wouldn't bark as long as they get a biscuit somewhere it's all they worry about hey God gets this down where the rubber meets the road I think everybody can understand that I think he makes it very clear I don't know what kind of watchman have you got watching for you you're supposed to watch for yourself quite frankly and you watch in the Word of God verse 11 yea they are greedy dogs which can never have enough enough of what what do they want out of life well prestige their religion man's religion and they are shepherds that cannot understand they just they're nothing but a plain old dog but they want to be a shepherd all right there are some dogs that are shepherd dogs that are pretty good dogs my little niece trains them hey that's a beauty to see them work they're shepherds that cannot understand what do you want to get involved in something like that for somebody that doesn't look to the future what a waste of time they all look to their own way everyone for his gain what's in it for me let my gift reign supreme let me do it from his quarter yeah, that makes a team to work with friend that's, that's I'm sure they're all pulling the same direction a 360 degree circle you got an old lazy dog that wouldn't hunt you know will hunt with anybody that will hunt with him and never bark and absolutely are ignorant of God's Word and don't know which direction they're going up down or maybe in between but they probably are going to have nice bodies that's flesh there's just one sad thing flesh isn't sticking around much longer and I don't know too many of us that have flesh bodies that haven't got something wrong with them I don't mean up here I mean well whatever okay we you know we've all got our little problems don't we but uh, there is something perfect but I'm going to you know what never a pain and I mean like right now I got 250 pounds of weight on the flesh between the bones of my foot and that floor that's a that's a that's a lot of stuff weight okay <laughs> do you know what it feels like in a spiritual body you don't feel that you're free that's future isn't that worth looking forward to don't we long for that time there's a good way to miss it that's to not look to the future because you're not going to make it without it God warns you I have foretold you did you listen All right. so it's very good to be pleasing to our Heavenly Father okay okay uh, verse 12 let's read that can't come ye say they now not God this is what they say I will fetch wine and we will fill ourselves with strong drink we're going to take communion and we're going to do it the right way okay and tomorrow we'll do it one day and then another day shall be as this day and much more abundantly tomorrow do you know what we're going to throw a two-day banquet but on the third day God's going to let them have the bang bam be careful my friend God doesn't issue warnings without meaning it now let's go to the New Testament for a while let's see what the Lord Jesus Christ has to say Inasmuch as when he died on the cross he took away all blood rituals and became our Sabbath and our Passover aside from that he was the living word he didn't change one iota of it nor did he become it he always was it from the beginning the living word 
Um, let's go to Mark 13. I don't have to tell you about Mark 13. Most of you are very familiar about it, with it. God says very clearly in Mark 13, they ask him, what's it going to be like at the end when you return? Now, for some of you, I know you know that's future, right? That's the return of Jesus Christ. Do we look forward to that day? Well, I hope so. I'm ready for him to straighten things out. And uh, he said, take heed for many will deceive you. Many will come in my name. Many of them are going to claim to be Christian preachers. And many of them are going to claim to be Christians, but they're going to have a lot of counsels for you. Well, how do I keep it straight? From his word. It's that simple. Okay. Let's pick it up, if we may, with verse uh, 21. We know in verse 20 that this was when God's elect were delivered up. Lord, wouldn't you hate for that day to come along that you're supposed to witness before the, spirit, the synagogue of Satan and you not have been told about it or learned? I think you'd be in... Uh, you'd, he wouldn't use you, let's put it that way. He only works with experienced, loving, God-loving, God-fearing people. Verse 21, And then if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or lo, he is there, believe him not. Now some would tell you, don't worry about the Antichrist. Well, Christ did. Now who are you going to believe? Christ said, they're going to say it. Not maybe, not perhaps, they're going to. For false Christ and false prophet shall rise. Not maybe, not perhaps, shall and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. Sorry, we're not for sale. Now listen carefully. Verse 23. But take ye heed, behold, I have foretold you all things. What is that? That's future. Christ is in the business of telling you the future so that you can make it, so you can overcome. Well... <laughs> Well then, but what about history? That's future also. What has been will be again. That's what we're in the business of, is living for a better life tomorrow. I hope everybody understands that. I hope that's what they want from our Lord and Savior. Is better than these flesh perverted lives in these flesh bodies. The perverted world, I should say. None of your bodies are perverted. I know that. But this world is perverted. I, I, I'm ready for a better time, you know. But, hey, we're having fun anyway, right? In serving him, learning the future, and making preparation. Okay, turn with me to Second Peter. Christ declaring... You don't have to worry about being deceived by those that come in my name claiming to be Christian preachers because I have foretold you. I have warned you. I guess the question is, have you read it? Do you believe it? Or do you let man tickle your ears? This man or any other man? Chapter 3 of the second epistle of Peter. I want you to listen. You're all very familiar with this, but it's good for us every once in a while to see how solid we are in the Word of God. All right? Chapter 3, verse 1. This second epistle, I'm writing this second letter to you, beloved. I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. I'm going to put you in remembrance of some things. That you may be mindful of the, what? Words which were spoken before by the holy prophets. Do, do you consider Isaiah that we just came from a holy prophet? I would hope you did. If not, you're a lost soul. This is the New Testament we're in. He said, I'm going to put you in memory of what Isaiah, Daniel, all of the prophets had to say, meaning history is important because it is the future. And of the commandment of us, the apostles, that's the New Testament, that's the teachings of Christ, 
of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? Don't look to the future, don't worry. For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. There's nothing new under the sun. Hey, they finally catch up, don't they? Poor, ignorant souls. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God, not man, by the word of God, the heavens were of old. That's history, a long time ago. And the earth standing out of the water was in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. There was a first earth age. Had nothing to do with the flood of Noah, certainly. I mean, he, he, he stopped it. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, that's yours, beloved, this earth age, by the same word, by what? By the word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. The day we get rid of them. Boy, what a blessed that's going to be. They're going to be gone. They're the ones that have no future. They should not study the future. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward. He loves his children, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He wants everybody to have a chance. Don't blow your chance. I said, everybody should have a chance. Don't blow your chance. Be informed. Look to the future. How? In his word. But the day of the Lord, now, now how long is the day of the Lord? Well, you just said it's a thousand years. So what are we talking about? The millennium, so-called. Will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements or the rudiments, tokion in the Greek, shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. Now, you know, many people, like, you know, we've, we were in Mark 13 concerning the last great tribulation. Do you know that you have many people, lots of them in some of the main churches today that teach? That all happened in 70 A.D. you got a lot of ignorance in this world concerning God's Word. So you got to be careful. How could the most terrible time of deception that there has ever been since the beginning of time be some little old tin horn Roman general marking, marching into Jerusalem in 70 AD. It couldn't be. Okay? So you're smarter than that. So don't let anything else smudge your vision concerning these end times. It's important. There are times you will make snap decisions. How much homework are you going to have to do to pilfer things out or straighten things out, not pilfer? Well, there's some stuff we should pilfer out, I guess. You know, it's called false teachings. Verse 11, seeing then that um, all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversations and godliness? Now we're getting down where the road. What should you be like? Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God. Well, I don't want to look to the future. I just don't want to. Well, then, guess where you're going? There's only one place there's no future, and that's hell. Wherein the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Do you know what that's saying? All the evilness of this world is going to disappear. God loves you and his Holy Spirit is a warming glow to your heart and mind. But to the wicked, God is a consuming fire. Hebrews chapter 12, the last verse. Nevertheless, we according to his promise, that's God's promise, look for new heavens and new earth 
where in dwelleth righteousness. That's what we look forward to. That's the future we're studying. That's what we want. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent. That means be sincere. Don't be sidetracked. Don't be derailed to track nine. That you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. We're all going to answer for how we served him, especially in this generation. His election have a destiny and a purpose. Like it, lump it, or whatever. We have to answer for that. But an account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation. We get saved. Even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. Most of the New Testament. That writ, did he have that wisdom? No, it was given to him. From who? Our Father. And all, as also in all his epistles, his letters, speaking in them of these things, these very things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. Don't be deceived, beloved. Stay in God's word. Let your Father teach you, not man. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before. What, what does before mean? It means you knew them from before because you studied the future. And what big deal in that in as much as the future is history anyway? Everything is future or you're in hell and dead. Okay? Beware lest ye also being led away with the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness. You're the captain of your own ship, beloved. Steer it well, okay? Hey, it's up to you. It's totally your ship and it's yours to do with as you please. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to Him be glory, both now and forever. That's the way it is. It does take that knowledge. Knowledge of what? The future. What's going to happen? Therefore, you know what to do. Uh, turn the next page. That'll end most of you up in the first epistle of John. In closing. And in the first epistle of John, we're going to pick it up with about verse 14. And verse 14 reads, who was John? This is old Saint John. He's also the John of the Revelator, which Christ, it was Christ's revelation. You've got to study the book of Revelation for it's Christ's word, right? It is not the revelation of John, but the revelation of Jesus Christ. If you follow Jesus Christ, you must be very familiar with it. Okay? Well, John is the apostle that Jesus really loved. He could count on him. Verse 14 of chapter 2, first epistle of St. John. Of John, that is to say. I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. You know the history. You know how it was and you have absorbed it. Fathers are supposed to be educated for their children's sake, okay? I have written unto you young men because you are strong. You can get it done. You're can-do, can-cut it type people. And the word of God abideth in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. Who's the wicked one? It was Satan, of course. Well, let's just pretend Satan doesn't exist. What would you say if somebody said that to you? I know what you'd say. You can't say it in here, can you? I know. Okay. Verse 15. Love not the world. This is where we can get in trouble pretty easy, beloved. We can start loving things of this world pretty easy. I got a real bad weakness. It's airplanes. <laughs> Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. We, we have to kind of sift uh, things out, all right? 
kind of like you would flour before you bake the biscuits. All right? We got to separate things. 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father. You can just mark that in your book. It's not from God, but is of the world. That's why we want to look to the future, past this world, okay? And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. Hey, it's going to be gone. Why? We're going to get rid of flesh bodies. Spirit bodies don't lust, okay? They're, well, in the future, they don't. In the third earth age, they don't, okay? The Nephilim did in this earth age, but I'm talking about bodies after the flesh body. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. How can you do the will of God if you haven't studied the future as he teaches it? You couldn't. That's an impossibility. Little children, it is the last time. We're, we're in the generation of the fig tree. It's not time to play around. This is very serious. And as you have heard that Antichrist shall come, that's the singular, the spurious Messiah, shall come. Even now already there are many Antichrist whereby we know that it is the last time. You've got many people claiming to be uh, Christ's people, and they're not. They claim to be Christian preachers, and they're not. Now, hey, I'm not judging anyone. It's, whether, it's real easy whether they teach God's word or their own. It's that simple, okay? Now, well then, can we really believe that there is an Antichrist? Well, I don't know. Do you believe God's word? This is John. Do you know what the word anti in the Greek really means? It means instead of. It don't mean anti like antifreeze, okay? It means the spurious Messiah is coming instead of Christ first to deceive those that are not learned in the word of God, okay? Verse 19, they went out from us, but they were not of us, so don't worry about it. For if, if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that that it might be made manifest that they were not all of us. You know, they're, not everybody's going to make the first resurrection. And hey, that's fine. That's no problem. Clutter gets in the way. It's hard to work with clutter around, okay? So never worry. God's in control. You just do your best and stick with God's word, and you will do just fine. But ye have an unction. Do you know what that means? That means an anointing. It means a charisma. You have the true knowledge and anointing from the Holy One. And you know all things. Why? Well, if you've studied God's Word, you do. If you've absorbed it. God, at the same time, will touch some of you when something comes up. And you're going to know that quick by filtering it through your filter of scriptures. That ain't right. That is wrong. And you have that built-in unction that the Holy Spirit calls you to remembrance. And you know that's wrong. Okay? And uh, that's just the way it is. 21. I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it. And that no lie is of the truth. It just won't stretch, friend. God is so simple. That that has been, hey, it's going to be again. And this that is now is yet going to happen again in the future from there. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist. That denieth the, the uh, Father and the Son. Those that would deny this word... You got some churches that will tell you, you don't have to understand the book of Revelation. Boy, you know, that's taking a lot upon oneself. That's saying God didn't really know what he was doing when he wrote it. When the very word revelation to a linguist means to uncover or reveal. It's one of the most important parts, and it's one of the most one of the simplest 
to understand books of the Bible if you let God's word speak uh, to you. Um, skipping then for the sake of time. Oh, verse 24. Let that therefore abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and the Father. In other words, God never changes. Once you've got it down, then he's not going to change it on you. Why? Because God is the same yesterday, he is today, and he will be tomorrow. But why should I have to remember what happened yesterday? Come on, because it's going to happen again. It's future. It's important. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. That's future, friend. That's going on and on and on forever. It's not like hell. There, there is no future. It's over. You're dead. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. I'm going to try to deceive you. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and you need not that any man teach you. You don't have to worry that some man's going to deceive you if you let this word be the screen of your mind that filters out nonsense. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, you shall abide in him. Again, why? He never changes. His word never changes. You know, how many of you have ever depended on an individual? They gave you their word. And you thought you had an understanding. And they may have been honest in this. But when there, a certain time and point comes along, this individual starts telling you the understanding, and, it, and it's new to you. It's not the understanding you thought you had at all. People will change, and sometimes it's very hurtful, disappointing, and, can, and it can even split a friendship. Don't let that happen between you and the Lord Jesus Christ. What it's saying is his word never changes. He's, if he made a promise, you can talk, remind him of it. Isaiah 46, 43 rather, verse 26 remind God of it and he says then we'll sit down and plead about it which simply means God said if I made a promise if you want to claim it you remind me of it and then we'll sit down and talk do you know why God says we'll sit down and talk because you might not have met the conditions of the promise he wants to make sure that first of all you know the word you know the promise and that also you meet the conditions it's, it's, it's quite an education in that little verse. It seems to me like I taught on that two weeks, three weeks ago or something like that, didn't I? 28. And now little children abide in him. That, that means mansion in him. Me no, okay? Abide in him. That when he shall appear, that's future, friend. Thank God. We may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Boy, I don't want to be disappointed or ashamed before him. I, I hope he can say we've done a good job. We're trying hard. But let's stay focused on God's word. All of it. Not part of it. Don't want to be one of these people that go down and pay $50 for a pair of shoes, put one on, throw the other one. Well, um, you know, when you're teaching on television, there are people that only have one leg, okay? And bless your hearts, I'm not talking about handicapped people. I'm saying sometimes people only use half of what they've got, but most usually it's not their feet, it's the other end. It's up here. Okay? So use all of it and, and you can never go wrong saturating yourself in the Word of God. Now I'm not telling you to become a religious fanatic either. It's just normal, okay, to absorb and to look forward. How could anyone not look forward to being with him? My heavens. That's what we pray about, we sing about, we, we, look, we just hope about and look forward to. Don't be ashamed when he comes. 
If ye know that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. In other words, you can't help wanting to do what he would have you do. I, I hope this pretty well has covered history because I hear people will say um, on television, well, I'm a historian, okay, and another saying, I'm a futurist, and usually they place me in that little slot, futurist, all right? They're the same thing. The history is not new. It's going to happen again. It's not old either, I mean. It, what has been, it's like the old world spinning. Just draw you a big circle. That old globe goes around and around, and what goes around comes around. It's easy to learn that way, friend. And God did not want you caught off short or off guard. And let me tell you something else. If you want God to bless you, you've got to do it His way. If your blessings seem to come up a little short, I would analyze it. This isn't that God doesn't like you. It's just that He gave you a brain and He expects you to use it to be pleasing to Him so that He can bless you. I thank our Father that He blesses those that study His Word chapter by chapter and verse by verse. And He has blessed us so much in being able to take that to the world. We thank Him for that. May we continue with ha without having disturbances uh, because those we nip in the bud and dispose them as yesterday's grass mowing from the lawn. God's truth always prevails. His blessings always hold truth. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for the written word. We thank you for your blessings. May we be better servants, Father. May we reach more, Father, of your children that need truth at this time. Help us in that. We'll be, we give you thanks for the privilege of serving you. In Jesus' precious name, amen.